Thank you for visiting the Musically Fit Musician channel. We're going to look at a piece by Liss, his concert etude number three in D flat major. In this piece, there are a couple of tricky passages for pianists with small hands. So today I'd like to share some tips that might be of help to you. Perhaps you might be able to even take them a little bit further and adapt them so that you might be able to play the piece with a little more fluidity and with a little more confidence. We're going to look first at measure 47. I'll play it for you as it's written, slowly. <laughs> and right here is where the difficult spot occurs between these two notes. And you can relax the hands somewhat. And achieve a a fairly nice sound, but it still feels very awkward. You could use this fingering, and that works fairly well. As also, it's it's definitely a viable option. The left hand is awkward as well, though not as awkward. from the fifth to the fourth and then this is a little bit stretchy right here okay we can take the f sharp and the d sharp that is played by this hand with the left hand thumb and then if i back up and come into it it seems to solve our problem now let's come into it slowly. Let's see how it works fast. I believe that it's a, it's a viable option. So if you're struggling with that passage, I would highly recommend that you try that. The next section we're going to look at is in measure 51. The left hand in this passage is difficult for a couple of reasons. One is the location that's on the upper extreme of the keyboard. Uh, the other is from here to here is a bit of a stretch and also from the A to the B. As you can see, the tension is, is right there. So what we're going to do is play the D-sharp lightly and simply move to the next note. And the same thing from the A to the B, we're going to just move to it rather than stretch. And notice I'm using the pedal to cover over some of it to keep it uh, sounding smooth. Now there is the risk, as you probably heard, of missing that D sharp, but I'd say the, um, the sacrifice of keeping the hand relaxed is probably uh, worth it to have maybe possibly a couple of wrong notes until you get it a little more comfortable in your hands. So let's try that slow motion. Which looks so much better than it just feels so awkward especially that right there um, and I believe it could work fast if you practice with diligence um, at a very slow tempo so that you feel comfortable with that movement so the last suggestion involves measure 69 in this measure, we have an arpeggiated passage between the left hand and the right hand. And this is a bit awkward. I'm having to get back down. So if you like, you can let the right hand take the last G sharp coming down and then going back up the G sharp once more as the left hand 
plays the arpeggio going up. And then once again, so what it looks like in slow motion. And what I like about that is the last note at G sharp really gets you in place for the, the arpeggio there for the following section. So hopefully that will be helpful to you and maybe even will give you some um, new ways to think about revoicing the other arpeggios in measure 67 and 68. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that the ideas will spur new ideas for your own practice and will encourage you to keep looking for a way to uh, make the piece accessible to you. Thank you again.